Okay, so Betaflight official release is coming pretty soon and it brings several noteworthy features that I'd like to talk about. So let's go through some of these and see if we can make sense of it all. So when you go to the releases page, click 4.5 release notes, which summarizes the main features. So I'm going to focus on just a few of the more interesting ones. So we have a lot of new GPS improvements, including improvements in magnetometer code. So this should be super valuable for a lot of folks that I help in the CineLifter community, but also anybody doing long range. When I started my PID tuning service a couple of years ago, a lot of people were reluctant to use Betaflight because they weren't confident about the return to home functionality. So it still doesn't have position hold, unfortunately, but any changes here are going to be a welcome addition to those and other people doing long range FPV. So hopefully I'll have more to say about this as I get testing GPS functionality this summer. Okay, and this is really cool. So you can now map your GPS flight in black box. This is really interesting. So you can look at your flight path overlaid on a 3D map. Okay, and I see that it exports flight data into a special file. So that might be something I look into with respect to PID toolbox. That's kind of neat. I like this. Okay, we also have some big improvements to angle and horizon mode. So this is really nice because going forward with PDB step response tuning, you no longer need to remove feed forward from the PID tab because angle mode has its own feed forward, so to speak. Now, if I understand correctly, I had a short conversation with Chris Thompson about this and angle mode has its own feed forward, which is applied to the angle controller. And it makes it much more responsive without the issues associated with having uh, angle strength too high. Because in the past, if, if you increased angle strength too high, it could cause some dangerous oscillations on certain large rigs. Because angle strength is essentially a P term, right? So now angle feed forward plays a big role in controlling this instead of P-term. P-term is still, there is still a P-term there, but feed forward is playing into this as well. So I need to dig into this a lot more, but needless to say, it works brilliantly for basement tuning and you don't really need to do anything. You just use it at its default, it's pretty good. But there are parameters in the CLI if you're interested and also apparently your rates matter now. So the shape of your rates curve actually affects the angle response characteristics, so keep that in mind. Okay, and one of my favorite new features is called dimmable RPM harmonics, or RPM filter weights. So this allows total control over which RPM harmonics are active and to what degree. So, to, so the RPM harmonics are on a dial, so to speak, with attenuation that can be set uh, from zero to 100%. So by default, 100% is, is where our normal RPM filtering is at. But you could turn down the amount of attenuation strength on either notch, depending on how strong those motor harmonics are. So that's really neat. I'll have more to say about this in a separate video. Okay, there is, uh, what do we see here? Easy landing. So I've heard a bit about this. There's an easy landing feature and it's, I think it helps tame rigs that tend to sort of do this bouncing around on landing. So this might be worth exploring. It's certainly not fun to have a cine lifter with a $20,000 camera bouncing around when you go to touch down. So this is something I want to look into a little bit more and see what, see how that's actually functioning. Okay, and the last thing I'll mention here is a big update in black box logging. So this is really nice. Now several parameters are logged by defaults, in including RPM and pre-filtered gyro. So you no longer really have to set the debug to gyro scale to get pre-filtered gyro. It currently still does that. So there's two, both come in and PID toolbox will read either. But now you can technically use the debug for something else, which is really good. And it automatically logs RPM as well, which is really, I think this is really critical. And this is, this is a great thing. So not just your motor, um, your motor signals, but the actual RPM will always be logged. This is fantastic for anybody who's flying around and you have desync issues or you think you have desync issues. This RPM is critical for, the, uh, for analyzing that. And uh, so this is by default always in the log phone. Now. That's really good. Also, I have some intentions of developing PID Toolbox to perform some kind of offline filter processing on the pre-filtered gyro. 
So the idea behind this is that we could examine the effects of various filter strategies offline in Pit Toolbox without even flying. Well, you'd need at least one log file, but you could use that log file then and, and examine how different filters would actually affect uh, the, the filter delay, etc. offline, right? So having RPM already logged would be really useful because I could also apply RPM filtering in PID Toolbox. So I'm working on this kind of thing in the future as well. So I have some rudimentary uh, code for this already, but this will be pretty neat. And I also see my PR in here. So we have actually we have now eight columns of debug available. So most people won't care too much about this, but for developers, it's, it's really useful. And uh, going forward, there will be, I'm sure, more development where we can actually utilize those debug uh, columns to have more debug uh, information available. Okay, so yeah, there's certainly a lot more going on under the hood. If you look at the, the pull requests that were involved in this release, it's pretty massive. So there's certainly a lot that has been done. More than I can talk about here and much more than I even understand. So, But I think these, these key features are really interesting. So I should have more to say about some of this in future vids. Yeah.